and a very good afternoon to all of you and welcome to the Sunset Safari. We are starting off our safari experience with a very, very special little leopard. And it looks to me, through my binoculars, that we are looking at a young male leopard cub called Hosanna. What a special way to start off our safari. Now Hosanna, unlike his sister Shungile, is not as relaxed with people on foot. So we're going to move away a little bit and we're going to call Brent in, who's on the vehicle, because that will allow him to make his way in and then we won't scare little Hosanna too much. He doesn't seem to be too scared, but he is watching us and he's not nearly as relaxed as young Shungile, his sister. You can just see He's a little bit, he can't quite decide where he wants to be. He's going to go right up to the top of this jackalberry tree. But there's nothing quite like approaching a leopard sighting like this on foot. So hold on one second, I'm just going to call Brent in. Oh, Brent, you can make your way through the side. Oh, this is so cool. So we called Brent in immediately at the start of our drive because we realized he was here. There's an antelope called an impala and I haven't actually even said hello to our school. So hello to all of you and welcome. This is just such an exciting start. Here comes Brent. My name is Jamie and this afternoon Viam is on camera with me. This is Herbie as well. Herbie's the one who's been helping us follow the alarm calls. And it's our job on Bushwalk to help track down the animals and then of course to find some amazing different things that we get. So that's what we're doing here this afternoon. So we found this leopard on foot. He's climbing up into the tree. We're going to move out, go and see what was scaring the impala on that side as well. While we do that we're going to let Brent go in and move towards this young leopard. How cool is that? What an amazing way to start off our afternoon with a leopard cub on foot and hopefully his sister's not too far away from here and that's what we're going to go and search for next. He's still in the tree. He's actually now lying down. You can see him. Brent is here as well. Brent and Craig getting ready to go in. He's just, uh, Now he's relaxed again, settled on foot. Beautiful. <laughs> There's Brent. He's going to be showing you the leopard and telling you a little bit more. We're going to leave Brent to it so that the young leopard doesn't feel too overwhelmed by everything that is going on. So we're going to go and see what's upset the Impala over there while we do. Let's jump onto Brent's vehicle and see what he's seeing from his perspective. Hello. Well, Jamie and Viam and, and I hope you're walking away. And I got to that area when the Zimpala was still alarming. So it looked like some of them were alarming at Hasana, but some were also looking in the opposite direction. So they're going to go see if they can find Shongile. Now, oh, isn't this wonderful? And not very far from where we found Shongile yesterday. Hassan is a little bit less relaxed on foot than his sister, but in the vehicle he is very relaxed. Look at him up in the tree. Hello Mr. Moo. What say you? Now, now of course he turns his head the other way. Uh, Diamond would like to know, do leopards live solitary lives or in families? Now the only time you see leopards in groups, Diamond, is generally when a female's got babies, uh, but most of the time they are completely solitary animals. Now, I'm pretty sure little Shongile is not far from here. Oh, he's hot! Because it is a very, a very warm. Light is quite difficult at this time of day, especially when looking up into the sky. And the reason leopards like to lie in trees like this is because it's nice and cool. There's a nice breeze, a stronger breeze up there, and less biting hohos. And hohos are insects. One young Onono Ingwe on Twin Downs Road, close to the Vuyatela Dam. So I'm just letting the other vehicles know. You can see he's... There we go. Listen, listen, listen. 
hear the Impala alarming, so I think Shungile is very close by. Let's just move around, so okay. see where his beautiful face is. I think he's going to be sleeping in this beautiful ebony tree for quite some time. It is very warm today, 92 Fahrenheit. Hello, Lola and Kristen. Lola and Kristen would like to know how high... Oh, now he puts his head the other side, of course. Oh, there we go, that's better. Go have your son for that man. How high do leopards climb? At the moment, he's probably 20 feet, 25 feet from the ground, right in a big African ebony tree. He's got some nice shade there. He's got a nice breeze. Oh, there we go. He's a tired kitty. Now, he's just over a year old, and by the time he's about two, he'll be leaving his mom and sister and going out on his own. His sister normally leaves mom or leaves home a little bit earlier. Now he's looking towards where those snorts are coming from. Oh, bless you. Bless you. He's got the sneezes. Oh, another one. Kamari would like to know, do leopards normally sleep during the day and hunt at night uh, like house cats? Yes, very much so, Kamari. They are mostly nocturnal, but they are opportunists like all predators, so if an opportunity arises, a silly uh, antelope walks too close, they wouldn't say no. They can go about three or four days without food uh, normally, but that's how what the gap is normally between the eating but they can go as long as nearly 10 12 days without food but when it's that long they're going to be in big trouble and he's turning around in the tree trying to get comfy oh he decided that's not a comfy branch It's a very nice tree he's climbed here. Yeah? Right next to the road. Jamin would like to know, are leopards the fastest of all big cats? No, they are not, Jamin. The fastest of all big cats is the cheetah. Uh, the cheetah can do over a hundred kilometers an hour. Uh, leopard not nearly as fast as a cheetah. But they aren't faster than lions. I'm not sure about tigers and jaguars to be honest, but uh, there are not too many of them in Africa. Now, to me it looks like he's thinking about jumping into the branch on the other side, but he's wondering, he's quite lazy because it's so hot. There we go, big jump. The incredible agile creatures. There we go, he's found a better spot to lie down. Uh, very hot, he's trying to get high where there's a nice cool breeze. Doing a little bit of cleaning, licking himself. Diamond's wondering, can baby leopards climb as well? Indeed they can. Not when they're very, very small. They can climb from about two months. They are very good climbers. Now he's just over a year old and he would be considered an expert climber already. So yes, baby leopards can climb, just not when they're very, very small. So once they're over two months old, uh, they are quite capable climbers. Now, Jason's wondering, do leopards usually sleep in trees? Well, Jason, not normally. 
Uh, they're actually most of the time you find leopards there on the ground. The only time you find them in trees is when they've got food or when they are, it's very hot like today and he's trying to get out of the, the heat and away from the bugs. But leopards are very comfortable in trees, but I'd say 80% of the time you find them on the ground. Now we're going to sit with this one leopard and Jamie is looking for his sister just down the way from us. So let's go see if she's had any luck.